Uh, welcome to Module 7, Organic Chemistry. Our first inquiry question is dealing with nomenclature. And the inquiry question is, how do we systematically name organic chemical compounds? And the first dot point here is to investigate the nomenclature of organic chemicals up to octane, C8, using IUPAC conventions. And we need to include here simple methyl and ethyl branched chains. We're going to start looking at alkanes in this video here, and then we'll look at alkenes and alkynes. But if you understand how to recognize, name, and draw uh, alkanes, then there's not much more you need to know for alkenes and alkynes. So let's begin here looking at our alkanes. All right, so before we jump into alkanes, let's have a quick look at carbon and why it's so important in organic chemistry. So some people call or well, you may have heard organic chemistry being called carbon chemistry. Um, and an organic molecule is one that has a carbon structure to it. So organic chemistry, we're looking at carbon-based compounds. A couple of hundred years ago, it was thought that only organisms could synthesize these molecules. Then someone accidentally created urea. Um, I think it was in the 1800s, possibly 1700s. And it was then realized that, well, we don't need an organism to synthesize these types of molecules, but the name organic molecule, organic chemistry has stuck. But just be aware when you're talking about an organic molecule, it's just one that has a carbon structure to it. Uh, so carbon, why is it so important? Well, it can f it's obviously got four valence electrons, which means it can bond uh, to up to four other carbon atoms. And that gives it the ability to form these really long branched chains um, of carbon. Uh, it can also bond with uh, non-metals, halogens, phosphorus, uh, sulfur, hydrogen. Uh, you're going to see a lot. Loves to bond with hydrogen. Uh, it can also bond with uh, some metals as well. So it doesn't just have to be non-metals. It can also form single, double, triple bonds. Uh, you can see down the bottom here, we have an alkene here with a double bond. And we have an alkane here. Uh, we have propane. And over here we have ethyne with a, a triple bond between the carbon. So all of these factors, when you take them into consideration, means that you can get an almost limitless supply or a limitless number of organic molecules. And in this course, we're literally scratching the surface of a scratch of the surface when it comes to organic chemistry. It's a massive um, field. Uh, so we're just going to touch on uh, the basics and then you go to uni, you can dive into it a little bit deeper, but it's a pretty fascinating subject. Now, just before we go on, have a look at this table on the right here. Down here, we have um, the, an increasing number of carbon atoms in a particular molecule. And on the right, it actually shows you uh, the number of ways that you can arrange those particular carbon atoms to form uh, a different structure and we call those isomers so if we have the same chemical formula but they're arranged differently we have different branches possibly we call that an isomer it's on, it's like when we say we have an isotope of an atom it's kind of the same but it's a different version well an isomer of an organic molecule is the same chemical formula we've got the same number of atoms uh, they're just arranged differently but have a look once you start going down this list here and the number of carbon atoms increases the number of ways that they can be arranged or the number of different isomers we can have um, is massive. And this is just to highlight the complexity and the almost infinite number of ways you can uh, arrange carbon, hydrogen, uh, and these organic molecules. Um, so it's a, it, for, that, for that reason alone, carbon is pretty important to organic chemistry, but that's not the complete picture. So to complete the picture a little bit further as to why carbon is so important in organic chemistry, we can go back to year 11 and have a think about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VESPA theory, which just describes the shapes atoms and molecules can take on depending on the number of bonds that they have, whether they're a lone pair of electrons on the central atom, and the idea that within these molecules, the different atoms that are bonded always try and arrange themselves so there's maximum distance between them. Now with carbon, the fact that it can form four bonds means that if we have all single bonds we'll get this tetrahedral shape here with a bond angle of about 109 and a half degrees if we had a couple of single and a double bond we could end up with a planar shape within the molecule or we could even end up with some linear shapes depending on the number of bonds that are formed 
And again, just briefly, this is just to highlight uh, why carbon leads to such complexity and why it's important for organic chemistry. So do we have to use carbon? Why is carbon so important in carbon chemistry? Aren't there other elements that could do the same job? Well, let's have a look at a couple of options here and uh, hopefully this kind of further um, highlights why carbon's so important. So to start with, carbon triple double single bonds are very strong. <clears throat> Excuse me. So carbon forms very strong bonds with itself. That's important when you think of an organic molecule of having this carbon backbone structure. It, it's got to be strong. That carbon backbone structure in an organic molecule is like a framework that you can attach different branches to. They can get quite long and quite complex. We can have functional groups with oxygen and nitrogen, etc., attached to them, and we'll talk about functional groups later. But the point is, if you're going to have a long, complex uh, molecule, you've got to have a robust, strong frame to attach it to, almost like a frame of a skyscraper. It has to be strong so we can attach things to it. So carbon has that going for it. It forms strong bonds with itself. Other elements lack the bond strength of carbon, like silicon, silicon, 226 kilojoules per mole, and oxygen over here. Uh, so they're not going to be able to form these long, complex chains because the... Uh, if, if, for instance, if it was silicon-silicon bonds, they don't have the, the strength in the bonds to be able to form long, robust uh, uh, backbones or frames that you can attach all of these functional groups and branches to. So I threw this quote in down the bottom here. Um, you see this kind of stuff popping up every now and then on the interwebs. So this guy's saying, the surviving intelligent life form on Earth is not going to be carbon-based. It's going to be silicon-based. And there's you know, there was, there's a train of thought that we could find silicon-based life elsewhere in the universe. Um, however, think about this. Silicon is right underneath carbon on the periodic table, so it can form four bonds. So that's what led people to think, well, maybe we could use silicon rather than carbon. Problem is, we don't have the bond strength here. You don't have the bond strength of carbon, so unfortunately, chemistry says no. You're not going to form massive, long, robust frames of silicon-silicon atoms because it lacks the bond strength that carbon does. So silicon's kind of, yeah, not really. It's out of the question. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen's really strong, forms really strong bonds with itself, so that's good. That's a tick for hydrogen. But what's the issue with hydrogen? What does it lack that carbon has? The ability to form four bonds. So that's not going to form strong, long, robust frames uh, that we can attach functional groups and different chains to because it only forms one bond. So unfortunately, hydrogen's out of the question. On hydrogen though, it is pretty important and um, it's a huge part of organic chemistry because hydrogen acts like a, like a terminal bond. You have these long complex carbon chains and usually terminating those chains, you'll have hydrogen because it forms one strong bond. All of those bonds uh, from the carbon are kind of capped uh, with a hydrogen. So it's important in organic chem, you're just not going to be able to use it as a strong, robust framework like you can with carbon. It doesn't have the bond number. I've already spoken about silicon and silicon. Yes, it has the bond number, so that's a tick, but it just lacks the strength. Carbon is also super abundant in nature and the universe, so that's another tick for it. So carbon is, uh, it bonds strongly with itself. It can form four bonds and it's abundant in nature, take all of those three things into consideration and no other element competes with carbon. It ticks all of the boxes, which is why you find um, these long carbon chains in organic chemistry. It's, uh, it, it's abundant, forms four bonds, and those bonds are very strong. So there are three different ways that we need to represent organic molecules. We need to look at molecular formulae, structural and condensed structural formulae. So to start with here, molecular formulae, you've seen these before. It just tells you the number and type of atoms present in a molecule, but it doesn't give you any idea of the structure or how they're arranged. So they're pretty limiting. Molecular formulae in, in organic chem do have limitations. One that you're going to see a lot is the structural formulae here. So you'll have to interpret uh, what type of molecule it is, and you'll also have to uh, be able to draw these molecules as well, or these structural formulae, as we say. So it does show you how spatially the atoms are located relative to one another. It also shows you the number and location of covalent bonds. If there's a double or a triple or a single bond in there, you can actually see that and where it's located. That's pretty important when it comes to naming these molecules, as you'll see later. Uh, lone pair electrons are usually omitted uh, just for convenience. 
So really all you'll see in here is the type of atom, where it's located, and the bonds between those atoms. So one thing to keep in mind with your structural formulae is the idea that, and we've already touched on this, that carbon forms these complex tetrahedral shapes, among other shapes. Now, if we were to try and draw that tetrahedral shape uh, on a two-dimensional page, it can get quite messy and hard to interpret. And you can see that down the bottom left here, we have a hexane. And it has been drawn with this tetrahedral zigzag shape to it, but it's kind of hard to see in there what's bonded to what and where things are located. So what we'll do is we'll just straighten that chain out and we can draw a hexane here as a straight chain, the hydrogen and how they're located with respect to each well, other hydrogens and the carbon are much easier to interpret. So bear in mind, the molecule is not straight like you'll see in these kind of structural formulae. They do have that zigzag shape to them, but it's just often easier to draw and interpret if, it, uh, if it's straightened out like you see on the right here. Okay, so the last type of formulae we have to get our head around is condensed structural formulae. These can be a little bit tedious to write out. They're very similar to structural formula, obviously. Um, they're just condensed, as the name suggests. So how are we condensing them? We're basically getting rid of the single bonds, and we're going to write the formula in one line of text. We're going to start from the left-hand side of the molecule and work our way to the right, writing down the, the carbon and what's attached to the carbon. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind before we do a couple of examples, which is the best way to get your head around it, is to actually do some. A couple of things to keep in mind. The only bonds that we will write in a condensed structural formula are double or triple bonds between the carbons. And any uh, groups, uh, like you can see this ethyl group up here, any group uh, attached to the main carbon chain, we actually write in brackets next to the carbon that they're attached to. So it's a lot to take in. It's a lot easier if we just do an example here. So... Let's have a look at butane down here. If you guys want to draw butane in your book and then write down the uh, molecular formula, which is the two that we've already touched on, let's um, go through how to draw the condensed structural formula. All right, so we're going to start from, like I said, the left, and we're going to work our way to the right. Now we can see here we have a carbon with three hydrogen attached to it. So let's write down here for our condensed structural formula. We have CH3. Uh, we then have one carbon with two hydrogen, another carbon with two hydrogen, so we can write CH2, CH2, and then finally we have a carbon with three hydrogen attached to it, so we can write here CH3. <coughs> Excuse me, that's our condensed structural formula uh, for butane. What about but one ene Don't worry about the fancy naming there, that's coming up when we look at alkenes and alkynes. Uh, well, it's the same deal. We start from the left and we have a look at our first carbon and what's attached to it, and we write that down. So let's, again, draw but1ene in your book, get the molecular formula happening, and let's do a condensed structural formula for but1ene. Okay, so starting at the left, we have a carbon, and we have two hydrogen attached to it. We have a double bond. Remember, we include those, and we have a double bond to a CH. Then we have here a C. H2, CH2, and then finally carbon with one, two, three hydrogen attached to it, CH3. So like I said, they're a little bit tedious. Um, <clears throat> the formula is still quite long. You just, as I said, you're just dropping out the single bonds between these atoms. Uh, two methyl but one amine. All right, so this one's a little bit more complex. We've got a branch here. We've got an amine group at the end here as well. Uh, but again, we're going to start from the left. And again, you've drawn this in your book. You've got your molecular formula. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Let's go. Let's do our condensed structural formula from left to right. Start with a carbon, three hydrogen, uh, CH3. We then move to carbon number two, CH2. We then move to CH. Now we have uh, a methyl group attached to it. So we have a, a carbon, three hydrogen. Because it's a branch coming off that carbon, let's chuck our brackets in here and say, off that CH, uh, we have CH3. Little methyl group in there. And then we keep going along our chain. So we have CH2, 
and then we go to NH2. So that's a condensed structural formula for 2-methylbut-1-amine. Um, it's still, I mean, it says it's condensed, but they're still quite long and a little bit tedious to, um, to write out. Okay, so that's your condensed structural formulae. So here we go. We'll start looking at our first stop point of the syllabus here. We're looking at nomenclature of organic chemicals up to octane, and we're going to include simple methyl and ethyl branch chains. We're now going to have a look at alkanes. Alkenes and alkynes are coming up, but if we have a look over here, we can see that hydrocarbons can be split up into uh, saturated or unsaturated, which we'll touch on in a second, but we have these uh, general classes here of alkanes, which have a single bond between the carbons. Alkenes have at least one double bond, and alkynes, which have at least one triple bond between the carbons. So that's your basic difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So our first group of hydrocarbons, so molecules made of carbon and hydrogen, are alkanes. They have a general formula of Cn, H2n plus 2. So this little general formula just tells you the relationship between the number of carbon and hydrogen in that particular molecule. So for an alkane, for instance, if we had propane C3, we would have 8 hydrogen in that molecule. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 gives us 8. Uh, if we had decane C10, we would have H22. 2 times 10 is 20, plus 2 uh, is 22 hydrogen. So that's a shorthand way and a quick way of determining the molecular formula if you know how many carbons you're dealing with. As we've already mentioned, alkanes are, by definition, only single bonds between the carbon atoms. And you can see down here the three examples that we have. Metheth and propane all have a single bond between uh, the carbons, so they must be alkanes. Alkanes are what we call uh, saturated molecules. And it just means that the carbons are bonded to the maximum number of atoms possible. We know that carbon forms four bonds. So if you have a look at all of these examples down here, each of these carbons is bonded to four other atoms, be it carbon or hydrogen. Alkynes and alkenes are a little bit different. We'll get to that in a second. But the fact that they have double or triple bonds means that that particular carbon can't bond to the maximum number of atoms. So we, we tend to call those ones, well, not tend to, we do, call alkenes and alkynes unsaturated. However, alkanes bonded to the maximum number of atoms possible, they are saturated. Alkanes are called a homologous series. They're groups of compounds with the same general formula. You can consider alkenes and alkynes their own homologous groups. Uh, and these homologous series, and it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter whether it's an alkene, alkyne, or alkane, they'll increase by uh, one carbon and two hydrogen uh, as we increase the length of these chains. So you can see here as we add, as we go to ethane here, we've added a carbon and we've also added two hydrogen as we've done that. If we add another carbon here to make propane, we've added two hydrogen uh, for each carbon that we add. Uh, now members of the same homologous series, and again, be it an alkane, an alkyne or alkene, they have similar structures, similar chemical properties, same general formula and the same pattern to their physical properties. The first thing to know when naming hydrocarbons is the prefix for the name that we give that molecule is determined by the number of carbon atoms in that particular molecule. All of the examples you can see on this slide here, on the right, they all have single bonds between them, between the carbons. So they're all alkanes. So that means that the name is going to end in ane. Okay, now the easiest thing to do is to show you a couple of examples and it should become apparent um, how this works. So let's just dive straight in and let's pick on this guy here. Okay, so we're looking at this molecule and the first thing we need to do is count up the number of carbon atoms present. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five carbon atoms means that the prefix is pent. They're all single uh, bonded, the carbons. So we can say this is pent, five carbon, pentane being single bonded. Let's try another one. Count up the number of carbons. Meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oct. We're going to give that the prefix oct. They're all single bonded. Ane for alkane. Let's try this one. Count up the number of carbon atoms. Meth, eth, prop. Give it the prefix prop. 
all single bonded, so it's ain. We only have to know up to, as far as the syllabus is concerned, C8 or octane, so don't worry too much about nonane and decane, but you will have to get your heads around and remember the order of these prefixes. Meth, eth, prot, but, pent, hex, hept, and oct, uh, and which number of carbon those prefixes relate to. So this is something you have to rehearse um, in order to name these hydrocarbons. All right, so before we go ahead and start naming some more complex molecules here, the there's two things we need to touch on. The first one is an isomer. Isomer is a molecule with the same number and type of atoms, but arranged in different ways. So think of an isotope. An isotope, as you guys know, it's an atom that has a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. So it's the same, but it's slightly different. Same with hydrocarbons. If you've got an isomer, well, you've got the same uh, number and type of atoms in there, but structurally they're rearranged in different ways. But if we have a look at methane, ethane, and propane, we have no chain isomers. And a chain isomer just refers to the chain of carbon that make up that structure, that backbone. There's only one way to arrange a single carbon. If we go to ethane, well, we can't really rearrange those two carbons into a different shaped chain. And the same with propane here. Uh, there's only three carbon, and I can't really arrange them any differently. They're always going to be one, two, three carbon in a single chain. But once we get to butane and we have four carbon or more, then we can actually rearrange uh, the structure of that particular molecule. And you can see here on the right, we have the same number of carbon, we've still got four, but structurally it's different. The chain of carbon is different and we would call that a chain isomer. So again, methane, ethane, propane, you can't arrange these chains any differently to what they are. Butane and beyond, yes, we can. We can actually make some chain isomers. We can rearrange how those carbons are stacked together. Which takes us nicely into the idea of these branches or side chains. If, they, if these branches and side chains contain only carbon and hydrogen, we call them an alkyl group. Functional groups may have some nitrogen, some oxygen. That's coming up in a later lesson. But at the moment, if you look at these structures and you see a side chain, just carbon and hydrogen, we know that's an alkyl group. And let's have a look at how we name these because we've got to actually do that in a second. The good news is the prefix we give to these side chains it's the same process we used for naming our hydrocarbons previously. So meth, eth, prot, but, pent, hex, hept, oct. Uh, that's determined by the number of carbons in the side chains. The only difference is rather than ending it in ane, if we were naming an alkane, for instance, like propane, uh, we'd actually give it the suffix ul because it is an alkyl group. Best way to do this, again, is to, to show you an example here. If we have a look at this molecule, we have a straight chain of carbon at the bottom then we have this guy sticking out the top here, this side chain. And we can see that the side chain only has one carbon. So we look over here, we think, okay, so one is meth. Uh, it's an alkyl group. So we would say that this is meth, methyl. It's a methyl group attached to these three carbon down here. So let's start putting it all together and we'll start naming some branched alkanes. The list you see here are the rules, so to speak, the rules of the game. If you understand these rules, then you can't go wrong when you go to name your hydrocarbons. Um, I'm not, pro look, it's probably best that we jump into naming some and I can explain some of these rules as we go using examples. But just quickly looking at this uh, list of steps in order to name a hydrocarbon, we'll go through them quickly and then we'll jump into some examples. Firstly, identify the parent name. Um, or stem name or prefix by finding the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Be careful with finding the continuous chain. Sometimes they can go around a corner and it may not be obvious. So be careful when you're trying to figure out which is your longest uh, chain of carbon atoms in that particular molecule. Then you just apply the rules that we know, meth, eth, prot, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, for instance. Um, and that's how we find out the prefix. Uh, if there are alkyl groups, so if we have side chains with carbon and hydrogen only, you need to place the name of those alkyl groups before the parent molecule name. So it could be ethyl hexane, for instance, if there's an ethyl group in that hexane. Uh, if there's more than one type of alkyl group, you've got to list them in alphabetical order. So if there's a methyl group and an ethyl group, we'd have to name the ethyl, then the methyl, alphabetically, followed by the parent name, which could be hexane or pentane. Again. Uh, your eyes are probably glazing over and you're going, what the hell? But if we go through a couple of examples, this becomes fairly straightforward. 
if you have more than one type of alkyl group, so maybe there are two methyl side chains, we'd give that the prefix di, if there are, so it'd be dimethyl. If there are three, of, three methyl side chains, for instance, we would have to give it the prefix trimethyl. Uh, just be aware though that this di, tri, and tetra, uh, they don't come into the alphabetization rule. So if you have a uh, dimethyl and you have an ethyl group, you still put the ethyl group first. You don't worry about the D and dimethyl. Uh, methyl would still be alphabetically after ethyl. So another little trick to learn there. All right, then specify the carbon atom to which each alkyl group is attached by a number before the alkyl group. And I'll show you via example what that looks like. Choose the direction of numbering to give the smallest possible number to each alkyl group. I will show you what that looks like in a second. You don't include spaces in the name. We use hyphens to separate numbers from words and we use commas to separate numbers from other numbers. We use hyphens between numbers and words, however. All right, that's a lot to take in and I don't expect you to understand or remember all of those right now, but it's easiest if we jump into naming some and looking at these rules in action. So using the rules that we just went through before, we're gonna put it all together now and start naming them. What I'd get you to do is actually draw these structural formulas in your book, uh, perhaps pause the video, and then once you're ready to go, we'll start naming some of these um, hydrocarbons using the rules we've just gone through. So I'm looking at number one here. First thing I'm gonna look for is the number of carbons in the longest straight chain possible. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a straight chain. So it's gonna be hexane. Obviously it's an alkane, it's all single bonds. So we've got hexane, but we've got this side group attached to it here. So we have, if it's a single carbon, we know that that's a methyl group. So we do have a methyl, and now we've got to ascribe like an address. We've got to specify which number carbon that uh, methyl group's attached to. So I'm gonna number my carbons in order to give that methyl group the lowest possible number. So I'm gonna start from the left, and this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have a methyl group on the second carbon and we know that that's six carbons long, that chain, so it's hexane. So the way we would write this is two hyphen methyl hexane. <clears throat> Excuse me, two methyl hexane. So the two just denotes which carbon that methyl group is attached to. Don't have to worry about doing alphabetization here because we've only got the one side, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry guys, the one side chain. Number two, looks slightly different. It's like a cross between a condensed structural formula and a structural formula. Uh, you may see these pop up, but it's the same, um, same process. So again, I'm straight away, I'm actually looking here and I can see that I have a side chain that has one, two carbon on it. So I know I've got an ethyl here, ethyl, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know it's gonna be ethyl hexane, but what carbon is that ethyl side chain attached to? Well, if I numbered it from left to right, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is not the way to do it, I'd have carbon one, two, three, four. So that would give that ethyl group an address of four. But if I numbered it from the right, carbon one, two, three, I can give it a lower number. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start from the right. And the way I would write this is I have three, which is the carbon the side chain is attached to, dash, ethyl, it's an ethyl group, three, ethyl hexane, because the straight chain here has one, two, three, four, five, six carbon in it, which is hexane. So we have three ethyl hexane. At any time you wanna pause these and have a crack and then keep watching to see if you've got it correct, by all means do so, once you feel confident but I'm gonna keep plugging away here. All right, so, oh, interesting. Right, we've got two side chains, but let's just make sure that that top straight one is our longest uh, carbon chain. Uh, meth, eth, prot, but, pent, hex, okay? Meth, eth, prot, but, pent, hex. Okay, so they're both the same length, so I'm gonna use this, uh, this straight chain across the top, and I'm going to give my groups an address. So we have a methyl group, and an ethyl group. So I'll just put in here meth, and we have eth. So this is when our alphabetization is gonna come into play. I'm gonna number those carbons to give these methyl and ethyl groups the lowest possible number. So it's gonna be carbon one, 
2, and 3. Uh, now I have to specify my ethyl group because E comes before M in the alphabet. So for this guy here, I'm going to call this guy 1, 2, 3. I'll put it up here. 3 ethyl dash 2, because I've got a methyl on the 2 carbon. 2 methyl hexane. Hexane because we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in the longest straight chain. 3-ethyl-2-methyl-hexane is the name of that particular hydrocarbon. All right, let's keep cracking on. Number four, hopefully you can see a pattern emerging here. So uh, now I'm looking at one, two methyl groups. So I've got two methyl groups and I have one, I'll just put that, methyl, methyl, and I have one ethyl group. So remember, if we have two carbons in a side chain, the same um, naming conventions hold, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, etc. So I've got two methyl and an ethyl. I'm going to have to specify my ethyl first, but I'm just gonna double check that I have the longest straight chain across the top. Meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. And I'll just check that that side chain doesn't give me a longer chain of carbon. Meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. They're the same, so I'm gonna use the straight chain across the top. Lovely. So I have a, I've got to put my ethyl first, this ethyl group. So that's on carbon one, two, three. That will give it a lower number. If I start from the left, it'd actually be the fourth carbon. So that's not going to work. So I can say here that I have uh, three ethyl. Now I've got two methyl groups. So I need to specify which carbon they are on. So they're on the two and four. So I'm gonna say two comma four dash di methyl. And remember there were six in that chain. So it's dimethyl hexane. So the name of this molecule down here, <coughs> excuse me, three ethyl two four dimethyl hexane. Okay, number five, um, let's keep cracking on here. So what have we got? We've got uh, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hexane again. I'll just double check that that side chain doesn't give us a longer chain. Meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, it doesn't. So I'm gonna stick with this straight chain through the center. So it's gonna be something hexane. Um, now the two side chains, the alkyl groups are towards the left. So I'll number my carbons one, two, three gives me the lowest number for those side chains. I won't number from right to left. And we've got an ethyl on three, we've got a methyl on two. Uh, so let's go ahead and say that this is three. What do we got? Three ethyl. Two methyl hexane. That's a dash. Two methyl Two methyl, three ethyl, two methyl hexane. And sorry, that's a that's a dash between the two and or a hyphen between the two and the methyl hexane there. It's a little bit messy, but so that's it. That's our uh, first five examples done. Okay. All right, guys. So same deal. Um, maybe draw these in your books and pause, have a crack, see if you can name them. And I'm going to start going through and um, and sussing out what molecules we have here, putting some names on these guys. Uh, okay, let's just see what our straight chain is here. We've got meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. Okay, just double check the side chain isn't longer. Meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. Nope, that's okay. I'm going to use the straight chain across the center. Um, so it's going to be hexane. Uh, now let's look at our side groups. We've got, uh, we've got a methyl and another methyl. So we've got two methyls. So it's going to be dimethyl hexane. And we've got one ethyl here, this ethyl group. On, the, on one of these carbons. So to name these, or sorry, to number these though, what we need to do is obviously give them the lowest number. So I'm gonna start from the left because that would give me uh, a two carbon, a three and a four. If we did it the other way around, this last methyl group would have a, a number of five. So remember, we've got to give it the lowest number possible. So number your carbons in this case from left to right. Number six is going to be, what have we got? We've got to put our ethyl first and it's on the fourth carbon, four ethyl dash. Now we've got a, a methyl on the, th uh, the two and the three. So it's going to be two 
that's a two, sorry, two, three, di, because we've got two of them, dimethyl, and what did we have? Six, meth, eth, pro, u, pent, yeah, dimethyl hexane. Sometimes easier actually to do the hexane bit at the end. Um, just work out what your side groups are, what numbers they are, um, and then go ahead and count up. Uh, as long as you know you've got the longest straight chain. And that brings us to number seven quite nicely. This could be, uh, it's a little bit, well it's not tricky, but you can get um, tricked on this one. It's not tricky, just don't get tricked. You might be thinking here, okay, so I've got a methyl group on carbon number one. Uh, and obviously it looks like we're going to number from the right to left. So carbon one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but look carefully. We're looking for the longest straight chain of carbon. Meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct. So this is actually octane. Uh, so don't think this is heptane. This is one straight chain all the way across here and around the corner. Okay, so it's octane. Now we're going to look at our side groups and we have, uh, so actually renumbering our carbon now, we know it's octane. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means for number seven, we have three, six. And hopefully I don't run out of room here. Dimethyl. Octane. All right, so that's what I was talking about before. You've got to be careful that you're picking out the uh, correct length. or the, You've got to pick the, the longest straight chain. It may go around a corner. Okay, moving on. So what have we got down here? Number eight. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, meth eth prop. So it's propane, meth eth prop. And we have, and it doesn't matter which way you do this, it's going to be the same if you do meth eth prop. But we have propane and we have... Uh, two methyl groups, so a CH3 and a CH3 attached to the second carbon. All right, so the way we're going to write this one out is even though we've got two methyls on the same carbon, uh, we still have to number both of them, and that's going to look like the following. We're going to say that number eight is 2, 2, dimethylpropane. Two, 2, dimethylpropane. And what have we got, number nine. All right, so this one here too, this can be um, a little bit tricky, this one as well. So we're gonna look for our longest straight chain, uh, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. So we have hexane here. Uh, be careful you're not looking at this and going meth, eth, prop, but, pent, because it's just the straight chain horizontally. This could go around a corner, and this one does. So again, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex. Uh, now we need to work out what, um, what our uh, side groups are. So we've got one, two, one, two, three, four. So we've got four methyl groups and no ethyl groups. So one, two, three, four methyl. And we're going to give it the lowest number. So we're going to start from the right here. And we're going to say we have... Carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we've got two, three, and we've got two of these methyl groups on carbon four. So four, four, tetra for four, methyl, and then what do we got? Meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, hex, hexane. Tetramethyl hexane. So again, that one's a little bit tricky too because it does go around a corner. Um, so just be aware of that. 2344 tetramethylhexane. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a structure that you haven't seen. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a structure you haven't seen yet. So these skeletal structures, what we're looking at here is at the end of each of these lines is a carbon. Hydrogen are not included, but if there was a chlorine or a halogen, that would be specified with its, um, with its uh, symbol. But looking at this particular structure, I can count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon. Uh, so that's octane. And then we have a single carbon with its hydrogen attached uh, on these side chains here. 
we know a single car carbon is methyl, it's a methyl group. So for this guy here, I'm gonna number my carbons from uh, right to left, carbon one, two, three, four, and carbon five in here. Uh, and then we can go ahead and name it. So that's two, five, dimethyl octane. Meth, eth, pro, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, yep. Two, five, dimethyl uh, octane. Moving on, uh, so another couple of skeletal formulas here. Uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six carbon, no side chains. Uh, it's hexane. Pretty straightforward. All right, what about this guy on the right? We have one, two, three, four, five. So we've got pentane and we have a single carbon, a methyl on the third. It doesn't matter which way you number it from, it's going to be three, whether I come from the left or right. So for 12, I'm going to call this guy 3-methylpentane. 3-methylpentane. Just remember, there's no space between methyl and pentane there. Uh, okay. Now, having a look at number 13, we've got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, okay, so it doesn't matter whether we choose either of these side chains, they're all going to be, it's all butane, <clears throat> excuse me, and we have a methyl group on the second carbon, so that is going to be 2,2-dimethylbutane, 2,2-dimethyl Butane. Uh, okay, number 14. So I'm going to do, what, what should I do here? Should I do all of them? I might just do, as you know what, I'll do, I'll do what's on this page here, uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to you guys. The answers to these, um, these questions here, these different molecules, it's on Canvas. You'll find the, the answers there as well. So you can go ahead and just do these on your own. I'll do the last three. Let's just plow ahead. Uh, we've got one, two, so it's two methyl, one, two, three, four, five, so we have two methyl pentane. And let's move along to this guy here, meth eth pro -bute. So we've got uh, butane, two, three dimethyl butane. So we've got two, three, dimethyl butane. So carbon one, two, three, four, and two methyl groups off the second and third uh, carbon. Uh, 16, here we go. So meth eth prope, it's the same if we come the other way, meth eth prope. So off the second carbon, uh, we have two methyl groups. So it's going to be 2,2-dimethylpropane. Two, 2,2-dimethylpropane. Two, two, so two methyl groups on the one, two, three, on the second carbon in here. Uh, giving us the name 2,2-dimethylpropane. So don't forget your prefixes here for di, uh, tetra, uh, for instance, um, and don't forget, uh, what was I going to say there? Don't forget to do it properly. It's been a long day. Uh, okay, look, uh, there are a few more for you guys to do, and as I've said, the answers for these are on um, Canvas, and if you have a look over the, the next couple of pages as well, you can see that it's asking you to draw these alkanes, draw the structural formula, and you guys should know what a structural formula is now. It shows you the bonds, the locations, and types of um, atoms in that particular alkane. So use the naming conventions here to draw these examples of um, alkanes in your books, please. Question down here says, which of these are isomers? So try and work out the... Um, 
molecular formula. Sorry, I just went blank there for a second. Try and work out the molecular formula and see which of these are the same. They're just different isomers. So they're arranged differently, but they all might be C8, for instance. They all might be C6, um, but they've got different names because they are isomers. Uh, once you've done that, look, if you have a look over here, cycloalkanes, I'll get you to read through this as well. Um, look at the general formula for a cycloalkane. Uh, it's not too much to get your head around what's on this page here, and I'm going to leave that with you. Um, but that's just to be aware, you can actually have carbons that rather than forming a straight chain can actually form uh, these ring structures and we call those cycloalkanes. That's it for our naming. Alkanes, uh, good luck. Let me know if you need a hand with anything. Um, and our next topic, our next stop in our hydrocarbon odyssey is going to be alkenes and alkynes. All right.